scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Is someone learning already? Let me give you a kind counsel. Live your life knowing that others will be beneficiaries of your carelessness or of your attentiveness to the laws of life. You have to know this and you have to believe it. There are many of us right now, except God intervenes, the way we are living our lives, our children are already in trouble. We don't have to talk about demons. You have already programmed it. It will take God and favor working together to bail them out. Because based on our attitudes, there is no possibility for a job, no possibility for a great life. It ought not to be so. Please hear me. If you're a man of God here, let me give you a kind counsel. It would take more than preaching, Greek and Hebrew words, more than laying on of hands, more than the ability to speak well, to be able to last transgenerationally. You must make sure that more than your preaching, you are sincere to invest in men. Hide away and deal with your insecurities and trust people. By the time you fight everybody and you are the Alpha and the Omega as the man of God, the day you are weak or you are not there, that vision dies. Is God helping us? Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry and there are people in business who have fought everybody. Anybody who is not you, you fight them. Fight every church. Fight every man of God. Fight every other person and you stand proud. You are programming disaster to yourself and everybody there. The Lord is helping us tonight. A good man liveth an inheritance. Inheritance number two, your name. Are you ready for number three? Inheritance number three. That must be transferred in fact I didn't finish let me give you two more scriptures on that name Proverbs 22 and verse 1 it says a good name Proverbs 22 and verse 1 a good name is rather to be chosen look at the Bible than great riches that if we keep riches here physical riches and we keep a good name he advises you to choose a good name because a good name can buy riches but riches cannot buy a good name ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 again it says a good name is better than precious ointment man of god anointing is powerful but make sure with that anointing you have a good name a credibility and a track record of loving sincere people i was returning from um a trip you know coming back to prepare for the service and I was handed a newspaper and I was just going through it and I saw somebody wrote something that blessed me so much he said um, I hope I can remember he said there are many people who are powerful but very few people are loving I said wow this is so instructive many people are powerful do you know how many men of God have 
power but there is no love how many business people have resources and intellect but you come near them you want to run away they don't look like christ at all he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you raise the dead not when you teach properly much more than all of these things i am telling you the greatest uh, virtue that qualifies you is your love life are we together you will be surprised that there are many people as sound as they are spiritually as intelligent as they are intellectually they never find help and nobody wants to come around them you know why i have taught you and we teach it a lot in the school of ministry that people do not care what you know until they know that you care they don't care what you know it's none of their business carry your greek and hebrew carry your anointing take it places they want to know that you genuinely love them if you keep power and keep love I will pick love a thousand times before I pick power because what defeated Satan on the cross was not power it was love there abided these three faith that moves mountains hope that makes not ashamed and love it says the greatest is love is someone learning now let's go to number three what is the third inheritance you must transfer to the generations after you your relationships and connections number three so number one your convictions number two your name a summation of your credibility your track record your value your contribution number three if you ever want to bless your children your subordinates or the people you are raising give them the leverage of your relationships and your connections hmm. John chapter 19 please John chapter 19 let's read from verse 26 God is speaking to someone tonight now watch this this is Jesus hanging on the cross <laughs> And he sees, remember, all the disciples had gone away from him. But there was this one person, John, and his mother standing before him. Watch what happened. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, because he loved him, he said unto him, Mother, behold your son. And then 27, he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And your Bible says from that hour, that disciple took her home. That means this is the woman that made me mighty. I know you call me Jesus, but respect the woman who raised me until the Holy Ghost came. I transferred that relationship, John. No wonder he did not die a natural death. The same way it, it took, listen, Jesus had to lay his life down. And until his time was on, all other disciples and apostles were martyred except john the be loved not john the powerful find out what mary did when jesus handed over her to him don't you think mary was an ordinary woman the angel spoke about her and said you are favored there were things she was carrying and he said john i want to give you a gift for standing by me on the cross i hand you over to this woman follow her she will do something to you do you know what it means to carry the word of God in your womb for nine months? You will never be normal. Never be normal. Hear me please. Relationships are a potent leverage. You can hand over relationships and cut short somebody's 10 years of suffering. The third inheritance. God is changing someone's life. Your relationships. To the point that when the holy ghost when jesus was going to heaven he said don't worry there is a relationship i'm about to introduce to you don't worry i am living but do not cry there is one called alos paracletus the paraclet himself i am about to connect you to a relationship and when he that spirit of truth is come that he will guide you you will no longer be ordinary men all it takes is a relationship Please listen, you have heard me say it 
that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and without fighting her she stopped becoming queen immediately then the king likes a village woman and immediately she became queen please look at me can i tell you this every great man is great among other factors because of the relationships that protect and defend him at that realm you have not transferred real wealth until you transfer your relationships now many non-christians understand this and they begin to program their children you've seen that happen they program their children to have strategic relationships political relationships economic relationships judicial relationships military relationships only believers we pray in tongues and yet we are bankrupt of intelligence please sit down the house of god is a place of wisdom next time your child says i'm ready for my inheritance Tell him, go to the house of the uncle that helped me and go and wash his car. He says, I'm too big. Say, sit down. You are not ready for a relationship. You are not ready for any inheritance. Don't give him any car key for anything. Give him relationships. Every man is made by his relationships. Because all blessings come from God through man to man. Nothing comes directly comes from God if God says yes and a physical man says no that yes will remain in the realm of the spirit there is someone learning please look up I can tell you this my life today is a product of strategic relationships there are hard things that have become childishly easy because of the leverage of relationships the relationship with the Holy Spirit the relationship with strategic men please do not downplay the power of relationships look at me how many of you have strategic relationships within the judiciary if you are in trouble today nobody loves you enough to help you you will suffer both Satan and men will walk in partnership and rubbish your life because you have not seen the value many of you have fought and insulted politicians you have insulted everyone the day you now need help and you need the gates to be open for you there are times that you can be joseph but you will still be in prison it will take the king to send for you to come out of your dungeon hallelujah when you see businessmen and politicians i'm, I'm not marketing any of them but i'm just teaching you wisdom you've heard me say it when a businessman will leave america and come to nigeria to celebrate the birthday of a two-year-old billionaire son is the baby his mate can the baby talk to him what do you think he's doing to fly a private jet hundreds of thousands of dollars to come and greet a baby is more than a baby and then he comes with his own children he comes with his own children he says this one is called john whether this one wants to play with him or not he will force that relationship to happen because he knows believers let's learn let's learn let's learn please sit down the bible says which man intending to wage war against a city will first count whether he has what it takes to fight and if he discovers he does not have the next thing is the way of negotiation and relationship for peace to reign there are people today they do not have money but they can cough out billions out of relationships and it will answer in the multitude of men is a king's honor not just the multitude of things to the degree to which you can call on the help of men and they can respond to you with unbending loyalty that is the degree to which you are great value men and value relationships inheritance number three relationships and connections relationships and connections 
someone once asked me a question one day i told you he said how come you are close to a lot of you seem to have a lot of generals and military people and paramilitary what is between you and military people i said god knows the kind of call upon my life that's why he brought those relationships if you touch me both god and men whether you go to the realm of the spirit or from the physical realm there is a system that's for sure while i'm praying my own oh, listen let me encourage you here please look up let me ask you a simple question i've asked you this but i will ask it again can you mention one person in your life right now who you can actually call and say i need help by 2 a.m and he will wake up and say i value you so much help is coming if you don't have such a person in your life believe me you are sitting on a time bomb there are men of god who love the lord sincerely but they lack strategic relationships i'm not talking of parasitic relationships that every time people see you they know that this taker has come there are people in this nation if their car gets burnt in the next one hour another car is coming even if it's for temporal use they will never be left in shame there are people today if their house gets burnt they will have a place to spend the night can i tell you this among the many things you invest in please invest in men this is the world of men place value on men i was very honored and even flattered when i came in i thought i did something wrong i saw you people shouting and clapping on one hand sincerely i'm a very conservative person i can be shy and except when i'm on stage of course once i'm not on stage when i'm on stage that anointing is on me so I, I don't really care but outside of that i can you know but when i saw you clapping on one hand i felt of course i didn't it wasn't necessary but on another hand i was praying i said lord may somebody learn it who loves you enough to be there for you don't budge into a future you did not invest in and expect a stake in it no who's who did you help to rise when someone was crying were you there to wipe the tears if you were not there when i was in the cave of adulam don't expect an invitation when i'm celebrating listen one of the easiest ways to rise is to find something working and someone rising and be part of the history of growth hallelujah by the privilege of god's grace with the bit that i've been able to do for god in ministry and leadership i've had the honor of seeing some of my dear people within the ministry and by extension spiritually i've seen the mighty and the marvelous things that god continues to do with them in ministry in leadership in business and when i sit with them and they share this with me my heart is genuinely gladdened can i tell you as tired as i am there are people when they call i will wake up don't ask me who if you don't know you are not it <laughs> can somebody see you as being valuable a valuable contributor to their life many of you have knocked on doors and ended up in shame because you use your days of glory thinking about yourself alone and never consider that this is the a world that that is interdependent please change and teach your children there are children who are respectfully speaking lousy they don't respect anybody they just believe that things will work out they are not building their track record of relationship because they think they have money or they think they have some kind of thing they laugh at the houseboy laugh at the cleaner laugh at anybody and then the tables just turn sometimes overnight is god giving us wisdom turn to your neighbor and say i value you let me say it now hear me as i'm saying it i value you i value that relationship don't act tomorrow like you don't know me remember koinonia look up please praise the lord praise the lord now please look up look up do you know 
hear me do you know that relationships can create not only leverage they can create exemptions it is true there are people today who have owned land they did not pay for houses they did not pay for relationships paid for it who knows you and loves you by reason of your committal and genuine sincere connection and contribution to their lives there are people everybody who is close to you you have hurt and wounded and caused pain life is watching you tonight is a night of repentance change because you are programming woes over your children whilst you are seated there in one minute please lay your hands on your head and say lord grant me the wisdom the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships and then the wisdom to start connecting my children and my children's children to the strategic relationships that have worked for me please pray you are a young man here pray for the grace to build strategic relationships you are an elderly person pray father the grace to maintain the relationships that have helped my success and that my children will have the discipline and the humility to value relationships. Your connections, your relationships. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The true story, one of these times, I can't remember which, which of the years now, I was trying to process a visa for one of the nations and then when I was doing my biometrics and I just sat in front and a gentleman saw me and was happy he was rejoicing and he said apostle I can't believe it I said what can't you believe I came to get a visa what kind of embarrassment is this do the needful and let me leave this place and he said no let me tell you a story you had come to preach on our campus so 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 years ago and this and that and that and I'm walking in this place right now and he was laughing he got up and went and spoke something to a woman i don't know what they discussed but he returned back and i laughed i said lord you see how easy some things can be i've shared with you an old story here when we're in zaria we're told that story that some people were a gentleman was going to nda and then because of the height requirement he didn't match the height requirement, so they disqualified him. And being saddened, he went and because his father knew the then late Amir, he went to him and said, Sir, they disqualified my son. And then he did not even write. The then Amir, we were told, said he should go back and tell the commandant that the Amir has added his height. That's right. Who can add your height? in this wicked world that we live in please i hope as you are laughing you are taking seriously what i'm saying yes some of you as soon as you finish service even if someone is stretching his hands you can look at him from head to toe no you are not my class be careful be careful don't forget that as tattered as they are looking something came on them in that service treat people with honor treat people with dignity don't treat only wealthy and blessed people with dignity you are a hypocrite treat everybody with honor and dignity apostle he cannot speak english no problem still treat them with honor relationships relationships number four inheritance number four that a good man leaves for his children's children are you ready physical assets now that's what most people call inheritance physical assets your cash your properties your businesses your estates your cash properties businesses estates in as much as i challenged it as being the ultimate thing you give it is also worthy of transference you can transfer physical things proverbs 19 4 let's walk quickly media proverbs chapter 19 and verse 4 he said 
did i get that right 19:4. oh dear wealth make many friends that's not what i'm looking for please help me my apologies numbers 27 let's look at 6 to 11. i must have missed a number or so numbers 27 let's start from verse 6 to 11 all right and the lord spake unto moses saying we're reading to 11 this and that all of these people thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren pay attention and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them reading to 11 and thou shalt speak unto the children of israel saying if a man die and have no son then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter this is the law of inheritance verse 9 and if he have no daughter then shall ye shall give his inheritance to his brethren verse 10 and if he have no brethren then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren last verse and if his father have no brethren then he shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family and he shall possess it and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord has commanded so there is a place for transferring physical estate and resources hallelujah I can tell you there are people whose lives have been accelerated because they had the privilege of receiving an inheritance it is not until an individual dies you can provide leverage of resources for instance i know people who haven't trained their children haven't helped them they gave these children the gift and the blessing of a house and say a car discipline them and gave them do you know that if you give your child a house and a car under um for as long as you discipline that child and help the child to understand you have given that child a big leverage for an average person do you know for an average young man you know how many years it would take to build a house and to buy a car so when you give people physical things it is also a blessing to them joshua chapter 11 let's read from verse 15 if God is helping you shout amen. amen Joshua 11 and verse 15 please pay attention as I read as the Lord commanded Moses his servant so did Moses command Joshua and so did Joshua he left nothing undone that the Lord commanded Moses so what did he do 16 Joshua took all that land the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same we're reading to 23 even from the Mount Halak that goes on to Seir even to all of those mountains to Lebanon Hamon and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them 18 Joshua made war a long time with those kings there was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all order they took in battle. 20. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly and that they might have no favor, but that it might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. Next verse. Watch this now and at the time came joshua and cut off the anakims from the mountains from hebron Debir, anab and all the mountains of judah and from all the mountains of israel he says joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities next verse there was none of the anakims left in the land of the children of israel only in gaza and in gath and in ashdod there remain next verse please it says so joshua took the whole land according to all that the lord said to moses hear this joshua gave it for an inheritance unto israel according to their divisions by their tribes and the land rested 
from war please look at me let me challenge especially every man here as much as god grants you grace let me not put you under pressure but please make sure that when god gives you the gift of time be able to justify it by using the favor of god your value your relationships in putting something physical together that can provide a leverage to a responsible child hallelujah there are many young people in let me tell you why prosperity is not perpetuated especially in africa because when the an average young man starts in life he does not start from zero he starts from minus minus means he will pay the price of the parents carelessness then when he's 40 or 50 that's when he arrives at zero and then by the end of his life he now makes the same mistake demons and spirits will come and add to bring it to minus again then he will add he will give his child there are regions in this nation that have a leverage of perpetuating wealth or have a track record because they continue to build one upon another when you go to israel you go to europe you go to america you will find out that some of these people they have businesses and estates that are 200 years old 300 years old 150 years old the founders are long gone but they gave the estate don't think about yourself alone a good man so says scripture leaves an inheritance his children's children if you can't give them a house give them land if you can't give them land at least let there be some money i submit to you that establishing yourself as a young man in our world today with the dignity of kingdom integrity will require the grace of god go and ask builders how much is one block how much is one bag of cement how much is a plot of land in a city like abuja here and in many cosmopolitan cities an average young man respectfully speaking who is receiving say a hundred thousand a hundred and fifty with the dignity of kingdom integrity without corruption without anything and minus any other leverage it would take god for that gentleman to be established do you agree with me by the time he's being established his children are already teenagers and that suffering will cut them short they may not be able to go to school at a good pace this is how people continue to lag again and again but in the name of jesus after this discussion may that grace that grace that will add favor to everything you are doing to accelerate your establishment may that grace rest upon you hear me you see the reason why when i'm praying for favor you should receive because by the natural course of things as far as our world today has presented itself you must play games and cut corners to be able to be established early physical assets it is not unscriptural even if it will require a parent denying themselves certain levels of comfort to provide that leverage may god bless i know that it is men's men's today is um, father's day and bless the men but may god bless both men and women who have paid the price to at least give their children something there are people who never had the privilege of going to school but mama will say i even if it means me frying something by the roadside to give my children that leverage may god bless you for that sacrifice there are elderly people respectfully speaking who are selfish they would rather the generations ahead of them perish provided they will have momentary comfort no physical things can be a blessing if god can help you and you can give your child a car or give your child a house or give your child some kind of physical assets to help and provide a leverage provided the first things are done convictions and the rest that now becomes a blessing if the prodigal son was wise enough to collect other things alongside the physical blessings he would not have had to return back in shame 
but he collected physical things alone hallelujah let me encourage you here if there is any parent father or mother in your life whether spiritually physically or by adoption who has provided any kind and any form of physical leverage make it a duty until the day you see jesus to honor them in the secret and in the open there are many of you here by the privilege you know god has granted your parents and your loved ones to be financially disposed and they have provided all kinds of leverage for you please do not take it for granted hallelujah do not take it for granted there are people here casually your father just bought you a car and gave you your father just bought a three-bedroom flat and gave you and some of us with our attitude of ingratitude can turn and say what is i thought i would have another one whereas there's somebody who is praying and say lord even if i can start with one room i am still grateful perhaps at the end of this service some of you may need to extend text messages communicating gratitude to your loved ones to say i sat down in church today and just thinking about my life i want to say thank you for the money you gave me it stopped me from becoming a prostitute thank you for the car you gave me it stopped me from becoming a 419er and a fraudster some of us may need to go back to our loved ones some of us may need to go back through history and say thank you to certain people who provided that physical leverage let's do a quick recap before i give you the final one has god helped you tonight inheritance number one your convictions inheritance number two your name inheritance number three your relationships inheritance number four your physical assets are you ready for number five inheritance number five your mantle and your anointing this for me is the master inheritance that you can transfer hmm. only a shoe -wa will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are names, there are titles, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. Only a shoe, only a shoe. anything physical that makes a man there are spiritual qualities that men carry that distinguish them in life and destiny please I want you to pay attention every man that is made genuinely made there is a spirit factor that is responsible for all that you see manifest there is no man who is just made from the resources of this realm alone as vast and as diverse as they are if you last in relevance and you make any constructive impact in this life part of the resources that must have made you you must have been outsourced from a realm that is higher than this dimension behold i show you a mystery let me show you something that will surprise you Genesis 25 <laughs> no matter what you give anybody you seek to succeed you you have not truly blessed them if you tr if you do not transfer the mantle the spirit the unction and teach them the secrets of maintaining it you don't only transfer mantles and anointings 
you must teach them your secret with God that kept it. Please pay attention. We're about to pray now. Genesis 25. The entire text is from verse 1 to 11. But we may jump a few places for time's sake. Follow carefully. I'll begin my reading. Then again, Abraham took a wife. Remember, this was when Sarah passed on. The Bible says they brought him another woman called Keturah. Verse 2. And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Median, Median, and all those names. Verse 3. In total, Abraham had about eight children that we know. Six from Keturah. And then one from Sarah and then one from Hagar. Are we together? Verse 4 now. Okay, he's just talking about, let's jump to verse 5. I'm saving time. The Bible says, everybody please read it. One to read. Does this look like something you saw in the parable? Remember uh, in the, the story of um, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Verse 6. But to the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, he gave what? Wow. Abraham gave all that he had to the one he knows is a son of covenant and promise. But to the rest, he called them and gave them gifts and sent away from Isaac his son. The Bible says, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country, read seven and these are the days of the years of abraham's life which he lived a hundred and three score and 15 years jump to 11 please verse 11 and it came to pass after that the de after the death of abraham that god blessed how many what of the rest how many sons did you read that he had and now the Bible says, after Abraham died, God blessed his son Isaac. What of the rest? What did he give Isaac that he did not give the rest? Hmm. Genesis 26 from verse 12. Please give us New King James Version if we can find that. Genesis 26 and verse 12. There was something Abraham gave Isaac that the rest did not have. The Bible says he gave them gifts. But to Isaac, he gave all that he had. Everyone, please read with me. We're reading from verse 12 and then I will continue. Ready? One to read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year. And the Lord... He did not sow that same year because he was the only one who sowed. Many people sowed just like him. But what was on his head was now controlling what was around his life. Verse 13. Be patient and read. One to read. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very what was on his head brought him what he had now in 14. Go to 14. What did he have? Of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines, he gave his sons gifts, but he gave this boy a mantle. He said, this is all that made me me. Go with it. You may go empty, but you cannot remain empty with this on your head. Verse 15, we're reading to 16. I'm saying this because this night, something is going to come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and they had filled them with earth. Verse 16. It says, Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier. That means there is something you can receive 
while you are receiving it your hand is still empty your bank account is still empty but destiny begins to rejoice and say you got something you got something more than money you got something more than relationships you got something more than a name i reserve this to be the last because there are few people who ever receive this hear me whether for men of god or business people or captains of industry this is the mystery behind the inability for sons to reproduce what is on their fathers they are looking for physical things but they never cease to carry that one factor ah, i sense an anointing already he gave Isaac all that he had. Genesis 27, please. Genesis 27, we're about to pray. Please be sensitive. Genesis 27, we'll begin our reading from verse 1. We'll read 1 to 7. Everybody, please watch. Please, let me have your attention. Don't be distracted. If you are distracted with this story, it's an attack. Just listen carefully. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said, Behold, here am I. We're reading to seven. He said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death next verse now therefore take i pray thee thy weapons thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and take me some venison next verse and make me savory meat such as i love and bring it unto me that i may eat that my soul may bless thee before i die verse 5 and Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and bring and to bring it. Verse 6. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak to Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat, that I may eat and bless you before the that bless you before the Lord before my death now jump for sake of time to verse 18 i want to show you a very deep mystery the highest form of inheritance that can be transferred and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am i this is jacob now who art thou my son and jacob lied to his father i am esau thy firstborn i have done according as thou badest me Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Next verse. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. He's lying, you know, as advised by his mother. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son whether thou be my very son Esau or not reading to 29 22 and Jacob went near unto Isaac his father and he felt him and said the voice is Jacob's voice but the hands are the hands of Esau and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and his brother Esau's hands so he blessed him 24 look at he said art thou my very son Esau and he said i am watch this now and he said bring it near to me and i will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee and he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought him wine and he and he drank 26 and his father said unto him come near now and kiss me my son 27 and he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and bless him and said see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the lord had blessed 28 therefore god give thee of the dew of heaven 
and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine next verse let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee he said be lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons oh 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 bow down to thee cursed be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee verse 30 and it came to pass as soon as isaac had made the end of blessing jacob and jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of isaac his father that esau his brother came from his hunting watch this and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said i am thy son thy firstborn esau 33 and isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and i have eaten of all before thou camest and i have blessed him and yea he shall be blessed it's a law i've released it already now watch this 34 when esau had the words of his father the bible says he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and he said unto his father bless me even me also my father verse 35 and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away where is the blessing and how do you take it away because he did not carry any physical thing is it not just to speak couldn't he speak again ah there is more to the realm of the spirit than you see how can a gentleman just cry a matured adult crying and the father said sorry so it's not about repeating words there was something that had already come on jacob let's finish to 36 and he said is not he rightly named jacob for he had supplanted me these two times number one he took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said has thou not reserved a blessing for me even one can i tell you this believe me when i tell you what is on your head is what controls what is around your life there are many people who ha whose hands are full but their heads are empty and easily what is in your hands can evaporate real inheritance is not the physical things you carry the conviction of the one before you the name that he gives you the relationships that he gives you the physical assets which is the least and then the greatest is the mantle and the grace that turn him you will hear the stories of people especially in the body of christ you will hear a man of god tell you when god called me i could not even speak english and today he has a ministry around the world brothers and sisters it takes more than hard work there are spiritual forces that may have come to partner with such a person there are people who came to this abuja they did not have up to 100 naira but their mama sent them from the village saying i don't have money but i once helped missionaries in 1971 and they said may my children be blessed my son go with this blessing and that gentleman will carry a box looking like an arm robber and as soon as he steps in abuja the forces of the spirit start mobilizing themselves hear me this is why some people do not fear it is not what is on their hand it is what is on their head that yea i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil hear me when i tell you i am a product of many anointings this is what i mean 
I have secured the blessing, the sworn blessing of many people. Hold on. Do you see why they took Jesus to the temple? Immediately he was born. They took him to the temple and met Anna the prophetess. She spoke over him. Met Simeon the prophet. Spoke over him. They said, now Jesus, you can go. We, are, we guarantee you will succeed. Was our father in the Lord Bishop David Oyedepo who said he was somewhere in the US and the Lord cut short his meeting and said, return back and make my people rich. He didn't give them any physical money, but he came back with an anointing that he can declare and say, be blessed. And you will hear that somebody did not apply for a job. And yet they called him because thou anointest my head with oil, but I see the results of my cup. You don't anoint my cup, you anoint my head, but it's my cup that runs over. Listen, believe me, sometimes I wish I have the liberty to share testimonies, but in many regards it will sound like arrogance. I remember years ago, a man of God prayed a prayer for me. I met that man and I greeted him and I prayed, an elderly man, and he just said a prayer. I, 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 I was, it, it took a long time to say amen because he laid hands on me and he said, Apostle, he said, may God create a problem that only you can solve. I said, ah, no, why? I'm somebody who is for the body. I don't like all these kinds of things. How can a man pray that kind of prayer? You've heard my story that I was in just many years ago and I went to go and buy sugar cane. Listen true story and there were two old women who were trying to buy i think sugar cake it was not more than 100 naira i pleaded with them i say you are my parents i'm your child please give me the privilege of paying for you they said no i said let me pay and when i paid they began to bless me and one of the women blessed me in hausa she said my son forever walk upon gold men are not just made by circumstances there are spiritual investments that men carry i've shared with you my stories of my encounters with the mantles upon god's generals i don't just come and make empty noise no now you understand what happened when jesus appeared to me i've shared with you my story when he appeared to me he never gave me anything physical but he stretched his hands and light from the king of kings and lord of lords that light entered into me that surge of power and that surge of grace please help them I came here tonight to redefine inheritance for you. Inheritance is not cars and houses. No, that is the least. Inheritance is not just estates. You have not helped your son, let me tell you. If the only thing you give him is a car and a house, armed robbers can steal the car. They can demolish the house, but can you give something that cannot rust, cannot be destroyed? Hear me. He gave the remaining children gifts. But he gave Isaac everything he had. And yet there was no Isaac carrying a truckload, calling a truck. There are many young people who have been praying for their parents to die. Lord, let them die so I can get the two bedroom flat. Don't insult your destiny. What was upon your father that made him to never beg? That's what you should look for. Not three bedroom flats, not two bedroom flats. There are shamefully, I say it with all due respect, 
there are siblings and family members fighting for years and decades over mundane properties not knowing that if you receive what made the men themselves you can change the tides there are people today who do not see eyeball to eyeball this car is for me this house is for me that is the least of it we're about to pray I came tonight full of the spirit I want to release something from my spirit believe me help them honestly I came from the depth of my spirit that something will be placed upon your head that will so turn your life around we're wrapping up two keys for receiving from fathers let me give you two biblical keys you want to receive from a father a spiritual father a physical father a financial father a political father any kind of father there are two keys number one the first key that controls receiving from fathers is honor the first key you will never this is why our generation of young men do not succeed because we have institutionalized this honor we see it as a thing of pride young people who have not produced anything they've not raised anybody they've not changed any life but we can sit down and mark the scripts of fathers and dare to criticize every father deserves your honor even if you see their nakedness the bible says noah's sons they saw their nakedness and one called his brothers to come and laugh even though he was drunk when he got up he knew they were looking at him there are some things that are there and the other one moved backwards and covered him and he got up and cursed some of the sons two keys number one honor malachi chapter one we'll read six to eight fire is going to fall here right now malachi chapter one from verse six to eight he says a son honored his father and a servant his master if then i be a father where is mine honor and if i be a master where is my fear saith the lord god of hosts O priest that despise my name and ye say wherein have we despised your name we're reading to eight ye offer polluted bread upon my altar and ye say wherein have we polluted thee in that ye say the table of the lord is contemptible verse 8 and if ye shall offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if ye offer the lame and the sick is it not evil offer it now to your governor will it be pleased with thee or accept thy person say the lord of hosts can i tell you this do you know why Jacob, Isaac already had flocks, but he said, the one I want to eat is the one you go and get, not the one at the back of the house. Why would he have flocks and herds and now tell his son, carry your weapons of war. I want the one that came from your effort. Place value on it. Let me eat. Let your honor for me turn to joy. Because that blessing from my spirit is only released through joy. There are many children today who are carrying curses from their parents, not demons. Because they've spent their lives causing pain to their parents. Sometimes we ship all kinds of things in the name of westernization. And you see children insult their parents, insult any kind of person. And... I, I'm saying this respectfully speaking young people whether in this country or across Africa this is one of the mysteries behind the hard life of young people we have no honor at all for parents not just physical parents anybody can get up and just insult anybody no you will carry courses in successions We read it already genesis 27 when you read from verse 3 and 4 
he said make me venison such that i love make me venison from your weapons of war oh no it's not just about giving money or giving seeds but let me tell you this as a person and as a principal you will never see me go and stand before any of our fathers of faith in this nation or any of any great mentor or father whether in business whether in whatever area I won't sit down and say I'm a great man Apostle Joshua Selman I understand this law when I honor I honor from the depth of my heart there are many pastors today you can lie down and hold the legs of a man of God and never receive jack because it comes through honor you can even kneel down and still be standing up in your heart it's not about all of this pretense and this this hypocrisy people do genuine heartfelt honor is the reason why you see great people hardly reproduce themselves everything God gives a great man it is supposed to be for everyone who is interested but very few people do you know that there are many homes like I told you the biological children of the man and his wife don't seem to carry their grace and then you will see one stranger who maybe came to squat the person who communicates honor is the one who carries the mantle learn it from tonight let honor be a culture husbands honor your wives you don't honor your wife your prayer will not be answered the bible said that wives honor your husbands don't say he looked for me what does that mean children honor your parents bring in all this westernization and you will punish your future in a way that you cannot imagine parents also respectfully speaking honor your children because there are things through their life that you may not have seen that God is revealing help this woman I'm seeing oil coming on her the first key for receiving from fathers fathers here does not just mean men alone those who have gone ahead is honor genuine honor how many pastors today talk about their leaders their overseers their, they gossip about them tear them down and then come up yes sir how are you sir that's the reason why no impartation works because the honor is not genuine how many business people how many people in corporations they sit down and tear their superiors insult them and talk all kinds of things and see them out see you sir god bless you he can cut cake for you and you can eat but that is it but there can be others who will say look i know this man is not perfect but i choose to honor him whatever granted him grace to come to abuja here and in five years he has become this i stand with understanding and i know and one day he can look at you and say I bless you or he will say let me tell you a story in 1971 my father died in 1972 my mother died in 1973 all my helpers died so how did you become great that is what is leading you to and a two-hour conversation will become a six-hour conversation in that office and at the end of it he will say I met one missionary who just said a prayer and I want to pray that prayer for you sometimes you see our father in the Lord that is you he will ask everybody to stand up see just because people don't tell you anointings are like addresses you can know where they came from when you see extraordinary results happening for people please let me tell you this look beyond the physical frame there are people who is a combination of strange mantles and anointings upon their heads hallelujah when papa idahosa was alive according to god's servant bishop Oedipo, he would tell you that one time he came to him and delivered something and he gave him an opportunity to pick some money and he said no if i remember correctly he said no 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 what i want is that blessing and he told him kneel down he said from tonight i impart upon you the grace of on time 
that before any need arises the answer comes and he received it when God grant me the grace and the privilege to lie down and pray alone in daddy Joe's prayer room I was not praying and saying God bless me give me tea give me bread I would be stupid to pray that kind of prayer I laid down there and one of the things I prayed I said Lord the covenant of answered prayer of many fathers who have gone that you have placed upon this man that he can speak casually and shift the climate of nations may that same grace come upon me I shared with you my story when we went to equity state and I saw people dying at 130 something 140 something 150 something I said no there has to be a grace here when we were done preaching years ago I now came back and we stopped at a house where someone 136 he just died I said please look for the oldest man here so that we can receive this grace for long life there were hardly people there who could speak English eventually we got somebody who could speak limited English and they took us to one man old man and we said we are men of God we just want him to speak over our lives and he looked at me and smiled and said kneel down those who carry this thing know they have it all let me tell you those who carry it they know they have it you don't stand before people as colleagues and receive mantles no mantles don't honor don't don't respond to colleague mentality Oh, I used to know this one. And as they prayed, I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. I now honored him, gave him a seat. And when we were going to go and enter the car, thanking the women who we asked initially, I just saw one of the women and they said that was the wife of this senior, um, the man of God, this veteran that had gone. They now, do you know, that the woman was in her hundreds and yet she was standing strong no stick no nothing i said what is this i said let's go back home if he's dead she's still alive in him two have become one the woman tapped me and said come she opened the room and started showing me the pictures that was the wife of his youth i hope you know those days they used to marry as teenagers that woman had stayed with him till his final days and then I said, since this man is dead and he died serving the Lord, they should tell her that, please, they've prayed for us, but I want prayer from her. The woman said I should kneel down and she removed both of her shoes. She stood on barefoot and prayed for more than 15 minutes in Yoruba. I don't know what she was saying. All I know is that there was a mantle. I returned with speed to Zaria and I said, my people, I came with an anointing. Stand up. Let me release something upon you first. Hear me. Your possibilities are defined by the mantles that are upon you. One day, a man of God prayed for me. And he said, son, because of this apostolic grace upon your life, I impart upon you. I never knew there was such a grace. He said, I impart upon you the kingmaker anointing. You've heard me say it. Kingmakers never become the kings themselves, but they can enthrone and dethrone kings. So you can stand and speak over an ordinary man and say, may God lift you. And that grace would defy anything and place that person there. It's a grace. Number one, honor. Number two, service slash support the second key for receiving from fathers is there must be a track record of service or supporting what they represent genesis 30 when you read from verse 26 to 30 genesis 30 let's read very quickly we're about to pray give me my wives he said jacob now in the house of Laban, and my children for whom i have served thee and let me go for thou knowest my service which i have done unto you next verse and laban said unto him listen carefully pray thee i pray thee if i have found favor in thine eyes 
tarry ye for i have learned by experience that the lord had blessed me for thy sake isaac went to the house of laban and turned things around and he said appoint me my wages keep the scripture there and i will give it we are reading to 30 29 and he said unto him thou knowest how i have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30 for it was little which thou hast before i came and it is now increased unto a multitude and the lord had blessed thee since my coming and now when shall i provide for my own household also listen when you carry mantles upon your head there are people who will give you jobs not because of any physical effort like laban they would have studied that anywhere this man sits down have you noticed that this man came into this business have you noticed that this man got a job into this parastatal and things began to change it is not always about physical work read your bible the spiritual climates that you carry can define possibilities in your life so you can hear people come and give you testimonies here they are not stage managing it we fear god how does someone just come and sit down and then by a week later his life just changes the same way your life too is about to change this night redefining inheritance now you know what an inheritance is now let me tell you this the final thing i'll tell you is this fans don't receive inheritance supporters don't receive inheritance inheritance is for those who are connected genuinely by blood by covenant by revelation let me repeat inheritance is for those who are connected genuinely by blood by covenant by revelation only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end hear me I'm about to pray please believe me when I tell you life does not have to be this hard it is the bankruptcy of something on your head you have not received some of you probably if you've been part of this vision for up to one year and your life is not producing any results check your life there is something you are missing believe me believe me there is the covenant of his presence that can bring you've heard me say it that i entered a covenant with god that i would never meet a person twice for that person's life to change you cannot come if you come to sit down here as a fan unfortunately or supporters club or well wishers it has to be a covenant revelation lord i believe lord i believe that something can come upon my life in spite of my background my lowly estate i believe that this wealth and finance thing can be settled once and for all i believe you can, you are the god of portions you can give me portions even in a strange land i believe as a man of god that something can step upon my life and ministry will no longer be a desert land i believe as a politician that i can carry a mantle that can fight for me at the gates in the next two minutes i'm going to allow you with the lord every dimension that you need to step into i will leave you in prayer for the next two minutes please i want you to cry from the depth of your heart for some of us is poverty you need to end once and for all for god's sake for some of us is weakness and limitation politicians this may be your chance to access superior grace that produces results businessmen here can be your chance to rise there are young men and young women saying apostle physically speaking i don't have any advantage 
but the God of heaven can help you. pray our global family following online pray in the name of jesus have been given to the church mandates have been given to the church for the kings to be born the man to return in strength and power Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well, that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.